Hi, I'm Vince with Taste It TV. How are you guys doing? Hello, good. Vince. How are you doing, Vince? I'm doing really good. Just introduce yourself to the camera for me. I'm Dan. I'm Owen. That would be them. Hi. So, uh, you're on the Get Happy Tour at the moment. It's obviously kind of a fun thing. British sense of humor. What, what is it and how is it completely different from American? It's much smarter than American humor and much more subtle, but it's awesome. Yeah, and it's a lot more liberal, I think, too. I think that the, the crowds over here would accept, like, the Bloodhound Gang's antics and stuff a lot more than in the States, as far as, like, you know, the touring with, like, kind of the popular bands and stuff, you know, goes. So it's been nice. You know, they have, like, sexual humor and stuff, and over here, you know, everybody just is used to it, you know, so. You got the typical British weather today as well, which yeah. is, yeah, just, just lovely. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Pretty much. It's just <laughs> big old grey skies. Has it been like that the whole tour? Not at all. It's, it's been grey a lot of the days, but yesterday we were in Bor Brighton? Uh, Bournemouth? Bournemouth. Bournemouth. Bournemouth, right on the beach, and it was gorgeous. It was sunny. It actually looked like home, looked like California, but the coastline and the beach, beautiful. It's, yeah, it's all good. Obviously a bit colder than California. A, li a little. <laughs> just Not too bad. <laughs> just a touch. How is touring with, with the bands going for you? Like, Are you friends with any of them in particular? Or? Yeah, we've been friends with Bowling Pursuit for a long time. This is... I don't know what our fourth tour we've done with them over here, um, let alone the States. And then we just met Zebrahead and Bloodhound Gang uh, when this tour started, and we're sharing a bus with Zebrahead. Those guys are just amazing. They're really, really funny, yeah. really just characters, good times. And uh, even the Bloodhound Gang guys are really, really nice. We've heard that they were pretty out there and like really heavy on pranks that are kind of gross involving fecal matter, and they're just not. <laughs> they're, just, they're just really nice and fun guys, like to have a good time and pee on each other. So we all get along. Who doesn't like to have a good time and pee on each other, hey, you know? I, I know. <laughs> so have there been any pranks in particular along the tour? Not involving wow. us, fortunately. <laughs> oh, actually, he got oh, a Sharpie yeah. mark on him the other night when he fell asleep with his shoes that happens on. A lot. We have a rule that if you fall asleep or, like, pass out with your shoes on, you weren't intending to go to sleep because your shoes are on, so you're kind of free game, and I ended up with lots of... Ink and Jesus statue and those earplugs in my nose, kind of <laughs> like you do. Yeah, you know, I, I sleep like that anyway. But it was just I wasn't in my bunk yet, so it was kind of shocking. Yeah, that, that's always nice when you know your friends know how you sleep, so <laughs> they just prepare you for it. Exactly. In the nicest, All I do is go to bed. So. Nicest possible way. How do you think you've gone down with the British crowds? Oh, want to take that one? I think it's gone. It, it's been amazing. I mean, the, the reaction this time has been. Far greater than last time, and we see the growing numbers of people singing the words, and and uh, there's just a level of respect that is just you know we 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 can't seem to get over in the states. So we'll keep coming here. <laughs> just keep coming back, and it'll be fine. Plus, you have better accents than we do, so yeah. that helps. See, we think your accents are better. It, it it just works out in a big pat on the back for everyone. So, have you played venues this big before in Britain? Not in Britain. This is the biggest. One of the biggest, well, I guess if you count download, kind of, but I don't think there were as many people at download for our show. Mm -hmm. This is definitely the biggest show on this tour, and it's fucking huge, yeah. uh, which is awesome because this place is going to be packed. Yeah. But um, this is by far the biggest tour we've done in the UK mm -hmm. thus far, which is fantastic. How does it feel kind of reaching out to that many people at one time then? Because I, I always imagined it would be quite cool. It is cool. It's, it's really different than playing, you know, three to four hundred size room or, or even a thousand I mean that's still a lot of people but when you see three four thousand people out in front of you it's like Jesus Christ where's mm -hmm. the where's the people end you know and it's you wonder how well you come across to the people that aren't in the front row because you can't see anybody yeah. so you can only hope that we can reach out to them I don't know yeah is it harder to kind of get the message across to the the whole crowd than it would be in a small room of people well, it's hard to get their response for sure yeah, I mean, you, there's definitely benefits. You have a lot uh, better sound, engineering, and everything going on. So it's like people in a, in a small room. Sometimes you, you have to deal with some faults, and, and they'll, you know, they'll miss out on the quality of the show based off of that, you know. But in here, it's like the crowd participation factor between you know 500 people and 3,000 people, people is a whole different thing. So if you get people to clap along and stuff, and you see all those hands, I mean, it's a whole different experience for us. You know, it's amazing. And playing in a smaller venue is really cool because it's intimate and you're, uh, you know, up much closer. And uh, that's really cool. But when you get out there and there's 3,000 people and you look at that huge stage, it's like, man, that's pretty fucking cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Help me out with something. The song 10,000 Days. What, what's that about? 
10,000 years. Okay, oh, I was going to oh, say oh. you're not familiar with 10,000 years. <laughs> I, I was going for a tool lab. Was it like 10, 20 years, 30 years? <laughs> Something uh, <I> don't know. <laughs> it's not as long, really. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, I don't know, Chris is in here, he writes all the lyrics, uh, but it's uh, about a guy that, I don't know, was born in prehistoric times and has to wait for the right girl to show up and it takes 10,000 years. Yeah, it's like, I think it's like a like rip. Van Winkle reference or something, kind of like the the old man under the tree thing, and he's just waiting and waiting and waiting, you know, for the uh, the girl of his dreams, and she's never there. And, and it takes a while, apparently. Yeah, a little while, just 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 a tad. Mm. Um, I wish I knew more, but Chris isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day we shall discover. The quest goes on. Yeah. Um, have you got any particular favorite songs to play live? Uh, 10,000 Years is one of them for me. It's, it's awesome. Good energy. Lots of jumping around. I, I really like playing some happy ending live because there's like a pogo throughout the whole thing. And so, you know, the whole crowd gets jumping on that one. But um, that and uh, Paradise is fun just because it's high energy. So, yeah. Yeah, I did notice when I saw you guys last time that you do get the crowd really involved. There's lots of jumping. It's all, it's all like a big party just in front of the stage. Have you had any particular favorite pastimes across the tour? Uh, sleeping. <laughs> Drinking. Yes. Um, Preach on, brother. <laughs> a little bit, little bit of reading. We finally uh, did some sightseeing in Paris. That was amazing. <clears throat> so we saw the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower and... Notre Dame and Arc de Triomphe and stuff, so that was fun. We never get to do that stuff, so there's never any time. But we got there early, so it was great. So good. Come across any rugby fans with a World Cup going on there at all? Yeah, actually, it was a, there was a massive blimp right by the uh, the tower yeah. with like the rugby stuff all over it, and it was it was, but it was it was right before they lost, so uh -oh. everyone was amped up, and then <laughs> we left before they lost. So. Probably the best time to <laughs> yeah. really just. Get out of there as soon as you can. It'll all be fine. Um, so what is your favorite country to play in? Don't, you don't have to say England. I might cry, but you don't, you don't have to. Oh. It's a real tough one. I mean, the UK is definitely up there for sure. Japan, it's a tough yeah. fight between England and Japan because mm -hmm. we have the same kind of crowd response and the shows are, are bigger in Japan than they are in the States. And it's, I don't know, it's different. It's cool, you know? There's that neat foreign aspect. I mean. Mm -hmm can't go out anywhere in the U.S. and take a subway through the main city to go do something cool like eat a Wagamama, so, you know, it helps. Do you find the language barrier a bit of a problem? In Scotland, absolutely. <laughs> 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 yeah. Language barrier. <laughs> uh, language do, language. You mean in Japan, I'm assuming? Yeah. Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. A lot of people there speak English. A lot of the street signs and subway maps are in English. Sorry, tube maps. Um, but no, it's not too bad. What do you think of the Dutch language barrier? <laughs> it's really strange. I mean, there wasn't as much of a language barrier in Holland because a lot of people spoke English, but the actual language itself is so different than ever other places we've been, like even Germany, you know, it's just yeah. The written. words are really long. It's like, and there's tons of O's. Tons of it's like, ooh, da, ooh, da, ooh. It's like that long for like tree or something. I don't know. Have you learned some other languages, like some, some words, or not at all? We, well, we learned a little bit of Japanese. 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 What, what did you learn? Hajibimashite, like nice to meet you. And Ohio gozaimasu? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? Uh, Ohio is good morning. Yes. Gozaimasu is good, okay. good, very good. Yeah, polite. <laughs> it's like ending the uh, phrase with, yeah. Like, uh, wakarimasen. Say it again. Wakarimasen. Wakari. Wakari, I, uh, oh. Watashi wa, yeah. Uh, I don't know. What no, 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 you got it. But you should know. I mean, it means I don't understand. So, oh. <laughs> so actually, you answered the question. That was great. <laughs> Smart guys. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask something to you, Dan. Um, like, how do you do it? Uh, stand on your keyboard upside down. Oh, the handstand? I, yeah. I don't know. I just kind of do it. Do you, like, practice that at home? No, never actually, which kind of makes it a little terrifying when we start a tour because I haven't done it in an hour long and we haven't been touring. But uh, I'll let you in on a little secret because this is Dutch television and not American television. Yeah, right. um, I had heard that the keyboard player from Motion City Soundtrack does that. I've never actually seen them. And somebody told me that. I was like, I think I'm going to try that. And I did. And it worked. And I didn't die. So 
Has it ever gone wrong? Oh, yeah. There was, um, I've only fallen twice. Once was in Scotland, and the other time was in the States, and my stand actually broke while I was up on it and Shit. hurt my foot kind of bad and was limping for a couple of days. But, I, you know, I nursed it and got lots of extra attention, so it, was, it worked out. Ah, it's always a plus. Well, uh, guys, I think we have to leave you uh, pretty soon, but have a great show tonight, and thank you so much, and hope to see you soon again. Great. Okay? Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Take care.